Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live premiere. Today, it looks like Past the Parcel has continued on to the next Winger and Whiner. Another individual calling me out, this time round, supposedly Kurt Wadsworth. Well, we'll get to the bottom of that today. As for the account on YouTube, which has popped up in the past, there's a few more comments in recent time. We'll take a look at that today, along with the additional comments by people in recent time. Acknowledge their questions, see if they can be answered, and see in general if there's any additional information on the Dylan Rounds case. Because the only way to find out more information is to have these discussions, and then it might trigger the right people to come on in, or it might trigger a memory within someone, you never know, okay? As we do go throughout this video, be sure to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, besides looking at the YouTube comments, we can go onto the maps as well. I can just like narrate over it, incorporate what I've heard within the documentary too, and just give my thoughts there visually speaking, okay? I haven't decided yet whether to use Google Earth or the Bing Maps. I think Google Earth is the best. Bing Maps, although updated, the boxes get in the way on the screen, which is so annoying, in my opinion. Okay. I saw like the odd comment, I think, in the live chat last night saying, is anybody out there or why is no one out there searching? Well, Lance Kelly has been searching here and there for Dylan. Even if people don't agree with it, even if it's not that successful, he has been trying to search for Dylan, so that's something. As for Ty Corbin, he did it kind of in recent time. Um, as for the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page, Candice Cooley responded back to one question about that, saying there are specialised, organised teams out there searching. But, you know, when you hear that, and if you've got people who are out there kind of often and don't see it, it does make you think. It might just be a general response from Candice Cooley to say every now and then there are searches, but not all the time, every single day, right? I mean, I don't know how you'd interpret this, kind of an unpopular opinion, but the longer a case goes on for, the urgency in trying to find someone can slow down. You know, in the early days, a high urgency because possibilities that that missing person, wherever they are, could still be alive. A race against time. So you're doing everything you can. Everything is fresh. You're in a race against time to get a hold of evidence, to use the resources, be in the right place at the right time with the right people. Yeah, you're working around the clock non-stop. But then the longer a case missing person report goes on for, that hope fades away, possible realisation kicks on in, in general, that the person may no longer be alive, more of a recovery mission. As for the speed of it, um, people could still be motivated to bring that closure to the family or simply to themselves, if they are the family out there searching. But still, the longer it goes on for, the harder it gets, the more draining it is, um, the more dead ends you may reach. And it just slows down in general, maybe because of resources being stretched, going on for so long, can't continue anymore. And then you might get a resurgence in the future. When it comes to the Dylan Rounds case, somewhat full on in the early days, obviously. Then maybe approaching winter time, just before that slowing on down before winter time. But then you did have that final push in going out there searching with the right people. But I think that was a level of urgency due to the winter time coming on in and how that could and how it did delay searches for many months. So um, that was kind of a fact of the weather to push them on to go back out searching. After that, the summer time, right? Which has been for a bit now, but when the winter was over previous even though the snow and the ice did drag on a bit longer than usual, I believe, in the US. But when the summertime came around, warmed up, better conditions to be out there searching, it, did it follow in line with a boost in searches out there? Maybe early on, because it's fresh again. Now we can finally get back out there. If you've been held back for quite some time, 
you can end up building energy within yourself to then be pushed back out there and do what needs to be done. But how long does that last? Once again, short burst, right? Now, around summertime being the, the introduction of the specialised and the private groups and experts and ex-military, as Candice Cooley described back then, how, how much utilisation has taken place with those resources? I don't know. It's never really been cleared up that. I mean, you think about it, besides that documentary, which was limited, and the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page and East Idaho News... Have any figures been given in terms of time spent out there searching as of recent time? I know when you look back to Box Elder when they gave their report in the early days on the case saying how many hours were spent here with those resources on horseback, etc. It gave numbers. It gave like total time and distance covered. But none of those figures have been given in recent time with whatever groups are out there, right? It'd be interesting to know, but I don't think we'd ever find out. The high degree of secrecy, you could call it, and radio silence, is that a good or bad thing, right? Is it because they're on to something? Well, if they were, it's been silent for many months, so obviously that's not exactly the case. Here and there, they might have come across something potentially interesting and then it turned out to be a dead end, right? Just trying to make sense because you get two forms of silence like when you're trying to search for things. Silence because you're not finding anything or silence you have found something and it's too important to tell the general public. The only other form of silence would be because of external forces which have silenced you. But I don't think that's the case here. Anything else we need to clear up on? As for the titles of these videos, obviously today is an exception because it's a direct call out, I guess. But other times when we do have these discussions, is it too vague, the title Dylan Rounds Discussion? Because, you know, what other titles can you name it? If you're not always focusing on a specific thing, but you're allowing people to talk amongst themselves and you share your own thoughts and clear up things, it is going to be vague. It's going to be like a general place, right? A general live premiere. I think what I've got to remember is there's many YouTubers out there which have terrible titles, absolutely, uh, you know, absolutely abysmal titles, most useless, worthless titles out there, but they perform still. So maybe the effort isn't always required, right? It is pathetic, right, though, with those channels out there and other people further afar, zero effort, and yet it works out for them. Pathetic, they don't deserve it. Anyway, that aside, was there anything else I needed to clear up or answer my response? As said, documentary, it didn't damage me. It didn't throw me off course too much. Yes, things missing, but is it more so the narrative turning, twisting, changing in a very specific direction, directly by Candice Cooley? That seems to be the pattern theme at this moment in time with people that watch my videos, not all, but some believing that the documentary evolves around Candice Cooley once again, power hungry, having control, having the final say, and directing how the documentary goes, right? It could explain to why certain people weren't included in the documentary in general, maybe. But ask yourself, why didn't Justin Rounds have a proper say then, if that was the case? Why didn't Justin Rounds step up, you know? Is he scared of Candice Cooley? Is that what people are suggesting in the chat, in the videos? Let me know your thoughts down below. But I said, all I'm going to say, if Candice Cooley has the final word and say when it came to the documentary being produced and exported out there publicly, and that some things were retracted, taken out, or just not included to begin with, it doesn't quite make sense because some of the key, most important things within the case, what we've heard, has come from Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, in those interviews. So for them afterwards not to include them in the documentary, if they had that say and power, it's, it seems a bit stupid, right? That's what makes me think maybe the documentary crew played a role themselves, right? Because just understand one thing. In the past, there was a Kenny Veach documentary on HLN and it came out, I think, in 2022, 
possibly, November. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm sure it was in 2022 November time, and it was on HLN. Not exactly accessible, right? One person called DJ Moore or something posted it on YouTube, but only the audio only. What was the outcome of it? A waste of time. So you think the Dylan Rounds documentary is bad? Think again. Think again. The Kenny Veach documentary, abysmal. I didn't even watch it. I predicted that it would be a disaster. I predicted back then that it would miss out things and it wouldn't include relevant research. I predicted that it would go down the conspiracy route and all the different theories and ideas, rabbit holes, to divert attention, direction elsewhere, to make a mockery of the case, to make it not seem as serious, that some of the key individuals that might show in, the odd one, will be cut short in what they actually say and what they want to say. And guess what? Everything I predicted was 100% correct. The Veach, one of the Veach family related members, the sister-in-law, Susan Veach, who appeared in that documentary, who was interviewed, who shared her side of the story, kind of tying in with the research I've done on the case. What she had to say was cut from the documentary to suit a certain agenda. And she had no say at the end of the day, right? So think about the Dylan, uh, the Dylan Rounds case. Uh, any final say by the documentary crew, makes you think. And like the outtakes, just imagine there were things talked about or included, but then taken out afterwards. It's okay saying how things weren't included to begin with, but what about the stuff talked about when being recorded and then it was edited out afterwards? That's the most interesting part, right? It being taken out afterwards must be a reason behind that. I mean, there might be some things like dead ends, false ends, which weren't included in the documentary, even if it was a relevant event, which happened at some point in the timeline, but maybe they didn't want it included because it kind of, it's like bloat where you want a clear, concise timeline. So I guess that's what the documentary was trying to do, just like how the other documentaries and uh, like official channels on YouTube do, where to tell the story. But the, only, the main problem was no proper time stamps, dates given, but no proper time stamps, even when it, need, when it, even when it was most needed. So that's my issue there. Okay, I just wanted to fill that in, okay? Anything else to cover? Um, maybe a few more whiners here and there, but it's just one of those things, past the parcel, it goes in waves of different individuals. Obviously, the less people covering the case, the more focus on the ones that are covering it, and especially on YouTube, because there isn't as many covering it. You can argue and say Lance Kelly is maybe the only other one here and there. As for a consistent day-to-day -day basis, I am the only one upon this earth doing the videos on the case, okay? And that's just simply because there are videos to make on the case, right? After that documentary, it generated new ideas and concepts and the red flags that need to be covered and we can look back at them, and that's what we're doing. Um, it's probably sooner than later for the better that I cover Weezer's map analysis video there, just so it doesn't get swept under the rug, that'll probably be coming next. But as for today, the main focus is on the supposed presence of Kurt Wadsworth, okay? Considering what we've heard of in recent time, that there is supposedly an arrest warrant out for Kurt Wadsworth, right, that he's been on the run, that he's been laying low, and then comes, what was it, Dylan's birthday or so, a few days after Dylan's birthday, which is past now, 1st of August, Kurt Wadsworth, under a different username, Kurt with a C, Woodsman, as you, as you can tell, left a comment on the Facebook page showing his story, his experience with Dylan, and uh, what led up to him going radio silent and wondering what happened to Dylan. We saw that, it looked suspicious, turned out to be Kurt Wadsworth on the run, trying to lay low and yet posting publicly online but under a different username, bit sneaky in a way. Well, 
Has the same happened once again on YouTube? Possibly, right? So let's just check the comments out on YouTube right now. We look at the other ones as well, and then we can start reading out, you know, the ones supposedly by Kurt. And as well, I think there is a, another video, maybe a more recent one, where the comments were focused on Corey. So there's, yeah, a few key names floating about, right? Recent time. Um, I'll give you my predictions afterwards, so make sure to stick around for them. And let's move on right now. Well, here we are. Just adjust the comments to the newest. Start from the bottom. Uh, yeah, video limited, of course. Once again, why, 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 why? Indiana, maybe it's your effing swearing on your videos that riles them. Lol. Well, the reality is when you look at the official guidelines... As long as you don't swear in the first seven seconds, you're all good. As long as you don't use swear words in the thumbnail or title, you're all good. Okay? Once again, there is a level of con inconsistency. The odd video, I might have said a swear word. The other video, I said more. The one where I said less was limited. The one where I said more wasn't. So, once again, inconsistencies there. Um, but let's just move on to the main comments here. So to begin with, Indiana referring to Corey, saying, lives in Montana, Corey does. Chase's ex-girlfriend is in Montana. She is just giving the story from Chase's ex-girlfriend's side. It is the only story she knows, but it has added to the tale from Chase's and Robert's side, things we didn't know before, the same way Kurt has given his side of the story when it comes to him. By the time we get to court, we will hear Brenner's side, along with Don's as the, and the Rounds family. But until then, we're only seeing part of Dylan's story until everyone is under one roof, we can be deemed to know it all. The thing is, the more characters, the more additions to the case, the longer it takes overall to establish the full picture. And there's a high chance that the odd few characters out there may not play a role in the Dylan Rounds case directly. But it leads to bloat wear, bloatedness, dragged out with time. You know, as we've discussed previously in the past, that maybe Montello may have never been talked about originally, if it wasn't for a few little factors here and there. And maybe some of the characters as well from the town would never have been known of in the Dylan Rounds case, if it weren't for the likes of Salty Pancakes and etc, etc, who brought these people in on live chats, live panels, etc, to get their voices out. And as you know, one side might provide the chance and opportunity for others to get their voice out, the ones that can get their voice out may take opportunity upon themselves and take advantage of it to nudge their noses into the story when they don't belong in it. So there's every possibility that there are some out there that may not play a direct role. But we have to await their story to find out now because the mess has already been done. The damage has already been done from the start when the Prats let them all on in the first place. So it is a long clean up job and it's moving in time. It is what it is. What are the responses? Badger life. That explains all I need to know about you. Sheesh. Florida hiker. So where is Florida Hikers coming? I can't see it on screen. I did go to the held review section as for comments and it didn't show up either. So likely Florida must have deleted his own comment or YouTube randomly did it themselves. Okay. What do we have here? Inspector Gadget. I understand your frustration with YouTube. Your chat... Uh, wait... Are people responding back to the wrong comment or something? It must be. So I assume this person's referring to me, Warlike Raf. I understand your frustration with YouTube. Your channel is one of the very few that does a deep dive into a topic or saga. Video platforms tend to be shallow by nature. YouTube needs to value the ongoing focus of your work. It will be hard to turn the tide if we keep bad-mouthing the the powers that be. Our live chats and ongoing comments would do well to stay focused on the content and the camaraderie. 
glad to be a part of this channel. So shout out to Inspector Gadget. I guess it was in response to me and like some of the comments I've said with uh, how YouTube have been in recent time. The only thing that I will say, Inspector Gadget, on a smaller scale, the whole self-certification score BS being low, videos being limited, I did experience that before covering the Dylan Rounds case. It happened in the Kenny Veach case before I did live video premieres and then you had the chat which could have been a bit questionable at times as you know. So it happened back then, it was on a very small scale, it lasted for about 3-4 days and was resolved. As for the copyright BS, third party fake false copyrights claiming music which doesn't exist in my videos, that's been long term. It's happened back in the past like two years ago before the Dylan Rounds case, okay? The only reason why I've not really experienced it from then onwards till kind of recent time is because I just completely avoided using music for most part of it, right? So I've basically downgraded to avoid further problems. But as for the gameplay videos, completely random, mobile video games with it having in-game sound, it's just another gateway and opportunity for false claims to come out, which is not in my control, right? But, you know, if there's anyone watching that feels that because of what's said in the live chat, inappropriate words or dodgy behaviour, if people think that is the driving force behind why my videos are limited, that's likely untrue, okay? Not the case. You look back at my earlier videos on the Dylan Rounds case, the odd ones which may have got about a few thousand views, significantly more than the situation I'm in now for the past um, like year or so. But back then, even when it was live premieres and there might have been a bit of messing around here and there, and maybe some insults depending on who was present, the videos weren't impacted then. It was just later onwards. Was it driven by dodgy videos I created? No, because those dodgy videos, which could be questionable, were appealed and approved later. So obviously, it wasn't an issue, right? So, you know, being dodgy, whatever, in the chat, it doesn't lead to any punishment. So it's fine there. And as well, when it comes to the videos that are limited, that is before it's aired as a live premiere. So even before the live chat has come into play. So there's no link or correlation there. But shout out to Inspector Gadget for being present. Shout out for being a member as well and contributing, sharing one's thoughts to the case. Good of you. What does Tom say in response to Indiana directly? Your ideas are usually simple and clean. You're a great person in the chat. Badger agreeing, and Indiana, get off. Indiana saying, oh, oh, here we go, here we go. It's only a matter of time. Indiana is back with the long comments. Let's begin reading. So she says, I do believe Corey is who she says she is, but why the sudden urge to come onto Warlight Raft to spill the beans? Why now? I have no idea, but given the volatile nature of Chase and who is behind bars at the moment, which from what I hear is the best place for him, we also have Brenner in jail awaiting trial, and I can see no reason for Brenner's gun and assault charges to be held up anymore, and having him sentenced and in prison, where the LE can, or rather already doing, take their time in regard of the sentencing of Brenner for the murder of Dylan. If so be... But if behind the scenes Chase is any way involved too, including Robert, then we have all three behind bars and LE would not be wrong in saying we have our man. But as it appears, we are learning there seems to be more to this case than what just meets the eye. So eyes should also remain on Chase and his little sidekick, Robert. So from some additional comments elsewhere, maybe people that aren't so positive towards Corey, they're saying how Corey came from the Salty Pancakes community, spent quite some time over there voicing her opinion, her knowledge onto Pancakes and that community, thought maybe it was a safe haven at the time to be able to discuss ideas and, you know, just get the word out there. But because it supposedly backfired and I guess the pancake community didn't really like Corey or some of them didn't quite like her, maybe feeling pushed back in some way 
And depending on how Pancakes was at a moment in time, because he could turn on people or insult them, and people, when they do feel maybe attacked, they end up backing off. And then came a, maybe a, sm- a certain level of silence and then finding, oh, where else can I go? What covers the case? Oh, YouTube. Oh, Warlike Ref. Right? So this is the next place to lay the camp and um, get on with things. Maybe. I guess it's also maybe their motive to spread awareness and to set the record straight in their mind at least for those out there who are confused or misguided in the case. What I would say is, though, at the end of the day, when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case, left, right and centre, it seems like any pathway you go down or anybody you listen to in the truth is considered false by another person. Then you go into a different direction and listen to the truth there, then it's considered false by a different direction. It's back forth, back forth, an endless cycle. Reality is, when further official documents come out, the court case documents, etc., that's only when and when, you know, the truth should be established, right? And that's quite some time off. But you see, you see already in the past, there's already been patterns a certain behaviour where it's come to me discussing something, mentioning documents, referring back to it, and then people down the line not getting their way, throwing the toys out the pram, whinging, whining, bitching, moaning, and saying that it's not true, it's not true, where's your proof, where's your evidence, Raph? I don't see it, I don't see it, I went on this channel and it said something else, come on, we're like, Raph, you should know better, oh, you, wh- why are you doing that, why are you doing that, it's like, shut up, you plum, you know, look back at the official court documents which have already been stated and you'll get the idea, okay? It's all under control. I've covered it extensively in the past, okay? So this is why I'm saying we're getting these burst at times where you look at these official court documents and statements and things issued and the evidence process from back then, right? Maybe not everything entirely, but some key parts like with the the, the phone footage, um, the 27 second clip, right? incriminating evidence on Brenner, the blood as well. And it said, Dylan's blood appearing on Brenner, right? But everyone was like, quite a few people were like, oh, no, no, that's, co- that's not copy trick. No, 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 I've not seen it before. I've not seen it before. Oh, it's like, calm down. It's fine. It's all under control, okay? When I say it's under control, it's under control. Let's see what else there is mentioned here. And come. Uh, where are we at anyway? Right. Good charges, yep, 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 but behind the scenes, chase anyone involved, what meets the eye, yeah, okay. I always have had bad habit of saying, to solve this, we need to go back to the beginning, where a lot of people say there were four to five people involved in the case, kind of like how um, Badger described it, or Dylan. And when the rumours occur on the run, is this a new event, or like Brenner, a past event now catching up with him? So like a pending arrest, I get that, yeah as we can find no new receipts in regard to Kurt in regard to this. So could this also be a way to get Kurt behind bars? Because this, what I'm waiting for, with then four people behind bars left to stew, whilst again the Ellie carrying on with Dylan's case, and will there be even more arrests to come? So I guess in terms of like the order of how things are going, even though the separate cases, separate charges, it's tallying up to the number five, the magic number, which has been talked about in the early days, it's getting to that point. Once it, if it gets to that point, then does anything happen there? So I do understand that in the background, possibly emerging. But if it was really serious, this alternative arrest warrant on Kurt Wadsworth, Kurt isn't doing a great job, is he? You know, he's appearing online public, he's still commenting, he's not exactly laying low, so it's not quite a bit reckless, don't you think? Anything else? In a lot of events, LE are renowned to cock up in not moving fast enough on the start of cases, true, whereas the FBI are not, and they will have a lot more background information on any of the players in this case, and who knows, including the Rounds family, what information they have, whether LE will have been left this formation. It takes time, so it is a fashion to place the players wherever possible behind bars on any conviction to give them that time. Should there be more 
such as people trafficking or drug trafficking in the area, then believe me, they will stand president to the death of Dylan Rounds, whatever the grief this family may be going through. So like I say, Ellie's best choice is to get all the players behind bars so none of them can disappear on them to separate them from the much bigger picture that may be going on and it's not to interfere with them. Hmm. I mean, as well, I mean, we got to understand when I've covered the case, my wording being specific lines, language used, there's been patterns and wow, wow, do you know what? Let's just go through the rest of the comments and then I think I need to get into my patterns, okay? I need to acknowledge all these patterns which have gone on. Ah, okay, so yeah, this comment here by uh, Inspector Gadget is the same one what we read out before. It was just posted in the wrong thread. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I understand. Okay, right, here's Kurt Wadsworth's comments all in a row. We'll get to that shortly, don't worry. I just want to mention my patterns quickly. First of all, we've got someone called Cindy. Shout out to Cindy, new viewer from the looks of it, saying that Florida hiker is correct in his comment, even though I can't see his comment, so I don't know where that's gone, which always was a possibility for me, especially when they said he asked Dylan for a ride. All bloody then told his mom he didn't give him a ride when apparently he did give him a ride from what that info came from I've forgotten, but Chase also failed lie detector and was apparently in domestic with baby's mama. Right, okay. Right, yes, 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 yes. Like, this is the thing. There are ongoing stuff which has faded with time. The lie detector test, or the polygraph test, as people like to call it in the US. You had Brenner that failed the test. No surprise there. You had Don Hatley that passed with flying colours even though in real life he lied face-to-face -to, -face to the LE when giving out possible locations to where Dylan could be at, such as Pilot Peak, which was a waste of time. Uh, but then Chase Venstra failing. But did he fail completely? Well, I thought it was worded as he failed on one or two questions, not the whole thing. What was it about exactly? Don't know. What were the questions about? Not quite sure. Was was the whole purpose of that polygraph test of all those characters done specifically in relation to Dylan Rounds or not? Because if Chase Fenstra was regarded as never a part of the investigation to, being, to begin with, as I think it was officially stated back then elsewhere, and was that polygraph test on Chase Fenstra to do with gun charges instead, and that's why he failed him. Hmm. But, you know, Florida hiker, where is he at? I saw him in the chat recently, but I don't see his comments down below, which is a bit odd, unless they're elsewhere. Yeah. And here's this person, Angelina, saying, disappointed, take the high road and start a new missing person project. Best of luck to you, but idle gossip is not factual. I watched the programme twice and did not see you mentioned. Of course, it was not the paid programme. Right, so what are you referring to here, Angelina? Are you telling me or advising me to cover a different project, another missing person out there? Because the thing is, if there is something to cover on whatever I'm covering at this moment in time, it will be covered. I like a checkpoint system. Reach a checkpoint reach a dead end, if nothing good comes out of it after that, and it's literally a dead end, then it's worth moving on. Kind of like what I did with Kenny Veach back then. So that's like how I go about stuff. Um, as for taking the high road, um, I guess that's a saying, right, isn't it? Um, you say that idle gossip is not factual. Well, yeah. But I think what you need to understand, Angelina, is that Quite a bit of the things I have covered and analysed are what's come from Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds and what the police have said and the court documents, etc. And then I've covered it from the sides, the stories from the Montello locals. And then I've assessed and analysed the rumours and the Chinese whispers. I've gone a full circle. I've juggled all the balance into one. So it's under control. You said that you watched the programme twice, Dylan Round's documentary, and you did not see Warlight Ref mentioned. Well, as said, Angelina, if you actually watched my video last night or so, 
or, or the one before it, I specifically said that my name wasn't credited in the documentary. But that was a good thing considering I was poorly painted in a false light in the documentary. That being my face. You know, I've got a big head, okay? My face fills the entire screen and the red robe shines brighter than some people's hair. Um, I don't know, hair out there that dyed the hair, okay? I watched the documentary. It was clearly visible. My big fucking head was on the screen as I was talking, okay? It didn't mention my name, it didn't give credit to me, but I think I can identify who Warlike Raph is when I am Warlike Raph, <laughs> okay? So just rewatch the video, understand the language and specific wording used, and then maybe you'll have a better perception on it, okay? Anything else? You say, of course, it was not the paid program, so I guess you're saying that you looked at the links provided in the previous video or so. As said, for anybody else that wants the links to the documentary free of charge, it was like two days or three days ago of the video I did, basically called Dylan Round's official documentary, reviewed and analysed. You go to the comment section, you look at the top pinned comment, which is at the top of the bloody screen of the comment section, links are all there, all perfectly, perfectly organised and under control, okay? Now, let me just share with you my patterns and thoughts, like I always said. So yeah, don't worry, we will get to Kurt Wadsworth's replies very shortly. If you have just suddenly joined, make sure to rewind back and catch up on the other things. But as for patterns, another one what I've noticed is that in general, over time, with certain individuals out there, if you're in a debate, a discussion or conflict with somebody and you question them on what they've previously said because it was poorly worded and very vague. They don't answer the question. Instead, they show a form of deflection and twist it in a different way and then put it back towards you, throw it back at you. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not answering. You are. The question is directed at you and what you originally said. You are failing to provide an answer you're demonstrating deflection, which would make me think that there is something going on in the subconscious mind of you, okay? That's what I've noticed with some individuals out there. Is it because they're being awkward bastards? Of course, of course. You know, as said, you look at certain personality traits of people. If you can't come to that conclusion immediately, you just look at where they came from. If they're a slave, then there you go. If they're a part of the undead zombie horde, well, there you go. Certain people out there that associate themselves with certain allegiances and groups will show maybe a similarity in patterns, behavior, of attitude and personality traits, good or mainly bad. And if they come here, you're going to see that, okay? That's just what happens. It is what it is. Does it link to lots of people? Mm, not really. If you gathered everyone up over time, you could say a fair few, okay? It's just like come and go, that type of behavior. But yeah, humans failing to answer questions, humans failing to cooperate, okay? I mean, even when it came to Ty Corbin or Lance Kelly, and it was like, do you have coordinates, coordinates, numbers to show and directly pinpoint the location of Don's place? Not once were coordinates provided with the experts in the area who've actually seen it or been in the area themselves, not been able to provide coordinates, which is kind of odd. And then some random person online at some point provides coordinates to the supposed location. You see the, the level of competence it's lacking in some areas and departments, but it's just one of those things, right? And as said, uh, when it comes to Warlike Wrath being challenged on certain points, maybe not in recent time, more in the past, it's just basically been back forth, back forth, back forth, back forth. Oh, you are right, Warlike Wrath. There we go. But that's what's happened, okay? I mean, it might just simply be because I've got a decent memory and... Some humans out there are like a goldfish. 
certain communities out there have the mentality of a goldfish. Okay? Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, well, I don't remember saying that. Of course you don't, because either you've pushed it and repressed it back to the back of your mind, more the unconscious mind, or you're trying to put on a good performance. You know, it's like, it's predictable when it comes to human behaviour, okay? That's why, whilst other people, when they get serious and they raise the voice and they go really, you know, verbally aggressive and stuff, what's the point? I know I have an idea of what can happen next or what people can do, so, you know, it just happens. Sometimes you can't prevent it, right? You know, you come across certain humans, like, it's, it's like, uh, what's your other pattern? Oh yeah, let's mention the other pattern, okay. So with time, you will get rejects, you will get the Noah's Ark effect, you will get people crossing on over, almost like the border, and making their presence known, good or bad. Um, and whether it be they then do something bad in the chat or then go elsewhere and then do something bad or call somebody out or make little digs or joke along and then they come back all happy and nice. Yeah, you can say it's two-faced behaviour. It, it's happened elsewhere mainly, not so much here, but obviously there's possibilities that it can infest itself upon here too. You never know anything is possible. But the pattern of notice, there's a lot of humans out there that seem to be easily pleased from the back end, okay? Something bad happens, they get stabbed in the back, and then afterwards they kiss makeup and it's all nicey-nicey until the next time, until the next time, until the next person, blah, 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 blah. It's a repetitive cycle. What happens here is you come across knobheads, okay? Knobhead, knobhead, dickhead, prat, wanker, prick, etc. Okay, congratulations. And then what happens after it? Not much, to be honest, but it's not going to be the all nicey-nicey approach. What's the point, okay? You can forget, move on, but you don't have to forgive. That's the way I sit. But I think a lot of humans out there do forgive, and that's what the weakness is. That's where things go wrong, where it becomes fragmented, deep cracks within, internal structure and foundations not present. That's why things implode upon itself and why it's happened multiple times. Whilst you do have communities right now establishing and connecting and forming you know, stronger bonds, as only because of a consensus towards a disagreement and distaste within somebody else out there. What I'm most interested in, inside or outside of the Dylan Rounds case, you've got these true crime communities and these sub-communities and sub-cells. What happens down the line when there's nothing left to talk about? Or what happens when the problem is eliminated out there, whoever it might be? What happens then? They just walk away, they separate, branch off, stick together, that's what's most interesting, right? The Dylan Rounds case has continued since. I've kept it alive, which has enabled people to share their thoughts and ideas, but then it's led to people in the background dragging themselves in as well, like a black hole gravitational pull, but that's just because of, you know, them being involved in the past. It's like skeletons coming back out the closet, something like that. But what happens when it just completely ends and that's it? What do people do? In my case would be Kenny Veach case or um, what else would it be? Experiment with another subject possibly. You know the thing is when it comes to missing person cases and slash or true crime that's always around. It's never going to stop. Good and bad reasons for that. Good reasons are there's still things to cover. There's still things to research and look into and be interested at. The bad thing is People out there are still going to be in, impacted negatively and affected and, it, you know, they could be involved in a case and it doesn't end well for them. So, as I said, it's, uh, it's just one of those things. It's just kind of like when it comes to hospitals, nurses, doctors and all that, that you know, they'll never have to worry because there'll always be someone injured, there'll always be someone ill, so they're not exactly going to be out of, out of uh, the position they're in, what they do and, you know, etc. responsibilities. There'll always be something around the corner. But... You hear too often the line of, oh, this person's doing that because they've got no content. Oh, because they've run out of content. That's, it's such a default line. I've noticed patterns, just in general in life, default patterns, default language, default words, default insult lines, default repetitive revolving door personalities. That's it, okay? You could say, don't let the door hit you on the way out, but do they ever leave? No, because they're constantly going round and round, revolving door, so not really getting anywhere. I mean, you can say Inky's unplugged eyebrows are like helicopter rotator blades, look like they were going to take off, but 
she still remains grounded in her behavior, personality, and level of control, okay? That was very cleverly worded just then. Well done, Andrew. But yeah, that aside, um, I think now, besides covering the patterns, the only other pattern I mentioned was there'll be many characters and names out there, a catch-up game for some, even to me, some people I've never heard of, don't know the backstory too, but now I have to learn about it. But you know what? There was a time and place where maybe you didn't have to because it was never needed or relevant. But because other people dragged them in, those names, and then twisted and turned things, and then they got dragged in and retaliated back. Now you've got to learn about it to clear it all up. Mm, not great. I'd say the, the fact of what you need is a catalyst. A catalyst which pushes everything shit aside or a catalyst that speeds up the process of the overall cleanup job. And that could happen at some point, right? Anyway, what we're gonna do now, we turn back to the comments and look at what Kurt Wadsworth has had to say about my coverage on the Dylan Rounds case, their thoughts, their attitude, their personality. Let's see what went down. Here we are with the first comment. If we just click on the profile, joined 11 months ago, six subscribers called Beach Us Us. So like a plan where it's like Toys R Us, but done differently with an attitude. As for the profile picture of a dog with a very stubby nose and face, looks like a bit of a whingy whiner, to be honest. Maybe it represents the personality of this person. But as it was described in the past by numerous people that this is Kurt Wadsworth, this is his account, this is him. Well, let's see the comments, let's see the messages, what the person's got to say, and if it does sound similar to Kurt, okay? So the first one says... You are a fool, Warlight Raph, because you don't talk to those who are in who are in the real. What? No, as to the facts as to Dylan's life friends and associates, which makes you another dumb ass. Right, so I think Kurt Wadsworth here, you know, is saying that because you're not talking to me, because you're not giving me a platform to speak upon, then I'm gonna have a whingy whiny moment. Okay. I mean, let's look at it this way. You look back at the past, you look at the call-ins, you look at the interviews, looking at the real people in the case, look where that went. Load of wishy-washy nonsense and dragged out stuff, confusion, inf misinformation, Chinese whispers, and not the Philippine wives coming on over, but Chinese whispers, right? Not much good came from that exactly. I mean, realistically, and this has been really realistic, you could argue and say, Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, they keep switching and changing the story and the narrative. You can't trust them. You can't listen to them. But then on the other side, you've got the outsiders who supposedly know a lot, but even they contradict themselves at times. And then you might have some locals here and there, or supposedly locals when they're not exactly, and even they contradict themselves at times. So really, everybody is a liar. Everybody is getting it wrong. Everybody doesn't know what's going on with the case. The case is a complete disaster, the end of. See, that's being realistic if you really want to push it that far to the extreme, okay? But the whole purpose is when you look and follow a case, you establish or hope to establish a form, a level, a degree of trust within somebody out there because if you can't and you don't, then there's no hope. Where do you go? Nowhere, right? So you've got to listen to someone. Now, does it become selective at times? Maybe, maybe, yeah. But it's not like everybody else's attitude out there where they say, well, I don't believe in that. That's fake. That's BS. That's false news. But that's true. And that's questionable as well. They're very switching and changing, right, and opinions. So this person, the way they type isn't so great. Warlike Raph, you are a fool because you don't talk to those who are in the real who are in the real. What does that mean? In the real matrix? What are you talking about? You're not making any sense here. If you're referring to locals or people within the area or so roughly, people that have come across Dylan Rounds in the past, people that have passed on information to the likes of Justin Rounds or at least attempted to with Candice Cooley, I have done that. People have reached out to me. Locals have reached out to me. Additional people in the background and it's been done treated with control, respect, and privacy, okay? Everybody else can be a bombastic, idiosyncratic idiocracy of shit, okay? A mess, and look where that goes, right? Different styles, different methods with different people under control.
control. But the fact this person is getting a bit frustrated kind of suggests that because they're not getting what they want, then they're throwing the to uh, toys out the pram, which is kind of similar to other people out there. But let's just carry on reading. Did it make any more sense here? Yeah, you're the best to those who are only deceptive demons, you dog. You're making money and being used at the same time to only be a division from the facts and the truth of Dylan, my friend. Disappearance, you effing pretender, effing up the case. Right, well done there. You definitely made yourself look like a prat with your poor spelling and punctuation. That's a very good job. Well done. Because they say Dylan, my friend, this does confirm highly that this is Kurt Wadsworth. There are some people out there that will say, duh, what do you expect? I just like reinforcing it, as said, under control. As for the other people in the background that like to be awkward assholes and stubborn and say, oh, well, how do you know? You, know, you can't really prove it. It's like, come on, let's look at my track record. I've analysed humans, I've looked at tone, I've looked at behaviour, I've looked at how people type and stuff like that. I've extensively done it for many years in the past. I've extensively done case studies with certain humans out there in terms of how they respond, how they react, how they say things, how they type, their tone of voice, their pace, their tone, the volume, everything and anything. So I've been able to conclude many times and predict many things, including predicting what a person would do to me within a five-year period with zero evidence, zero proof, but absolutely knowledge within and, you know, impersonations and impressions and predictions. And it came true because they admitted it, right? So, wow, a lot going on, but a lot under control a lot of self-torture, a lot of torture over time. That's where I am, where I am now, and why I'm able to do what I do through torture, okay? So, let's reread this comment. You're the best to those who are only deceptive demons. Right, so Kurt Wadsworth, in the case besides Warlight Wrath, who do you dislike? Who do you visualise as a form of disruption and chaos in effing up the case? Let me know down below, okay? Because I can imagine some of the people you label and name, I don't look up to, okay? I don't bow down to, right? So it kind of makes your point invalid to begin with. Um, and you say about deceptive demons. Well, you know, when I was much younger, I came across the devil in the woods, okay? I've told that story in the past. It stood there, it laughed at me, it backed off into the darkness. I gave zero fucks about it at the time, is where it is. Um, did my face scare it off? Maybe. But what else do we have here? You're making money and being used at the same time to only be a division. You mean a diversion. Come on, get the words correct. Right. I mean, this is the thing. Is it possible to make money and be used at the same time? You know, it tends to be you're used and you don't get anything in return. That's what the definition of being used is. But then again, in people's mindsets out there, it could be multiple factors included. You know, how can one be used when one is aware of patterns, trends, and predictions and get it right at the same time? Mm. But, ne but you never know, you never know. As said, Black Widow. Remember the Black Widow within the case somewhere? They know exactly what they're doing. Might mess about, may act a bit loose, casual at times, but they know where they are, where they stand, and what's ahead. Yeah. So I mean, certain keywords, key terminology, can tap into the mind at times and symbolise what can happen and what is happening, okay? Under control. Anything else? So Kurt Wadsworth believes that I am diverting focus within the case, that I am the disruptor. Do you know what? I think what we're seeing, and this is another prediction, okay, Everybody listen, the prediction is that all that's been said and done by other people out there, whilst they've been labelled with time in a valid way and it's not been accepted, what will eventually happen is Warlight Wrath will receive all those uh, titles and labels upon oneself for no true reason. And it'll become a bit of a bit of a joke, okay, a bit of a mockery in, in a sense, like... You know, I wouldn't be surprised if someday that the undead zombie horde end up calling Warlight Raft the narcissist, okay? 
Um, we've already seen it as Warlight Ref being the causation and creator of drama within the case, which obviously makes total sense. Not. But, you know, you get those labels going about and it'll just build and collect with time. Because at the end of the day, you put that aside and you think in general, Warlight Ref is the man with many nicknames and not always the right ones. It just happens. It's the way humans are out there. Spasmodic individuals, obsessive people, degenerative mindsets, incompetent, ignorant, arrogant, egocentric. A lot going on, okay? But... Anything else to mention here from the facts and the truth of Dylan, my friend? You pretender, effing up the case. A pretender. Would a pretender spend this long on the case covering it? Because whilst you, Kurt Wadsworth, can you say, Dylan, my friend, oh, the case, you know, it needs to be covered. I'm the one that's kept the case alive, you plum. I'm the one that's uploaded 366 videos on the case, right? This case, these videos, compared to other videos out there of other cases or mysteries, Dylan Rounds is more dead in the water now, the case itself, than what it was back then. But I'm still standing because there are things to cover, right? Even if there's only 20 people watching, even if there's only 5 people watching, if a video needs to be made, it'll be made, right? Things, If something needs to be got done, it needs to get done. And as well... Coming, these comments coming from an individual that is half pissed half the time, who, who's got a discombobulated mindset, who says one thing and then the other afterwards. It's a bit hypocritical because, you know, whilst we can focus on Candice Cooley switching and changing, Kurt Wadsworth done that himself with words. And there'll be witnesses present right now that can confirm that. Okay, the bitch boy posse group in the background may step on in, the little cheerleaders as well, whichever gender. But, um, you know, there'll be people present right now that have extensively watched those interviews from the past, the Kurt Wadsworth ones and the Salty Pancake ones, and highlighted the, you know, inaccuracies and mistakes made within it, switching and changing, one minute sober, the next minute drunk, and it doesn't quite tie in line with one another. So for a person in that state to then call me out as being uh, disruptive and diverting the case, that seems very hypocritical, okay? And why did you have to get paid to appear on Salty Pancakes panel or live stream? Why not just do it free of charge if you really care about the Dylan Rounds case? Why get paid for it? Okay? It's what I mean. People are talking about the money aspects, complaining about that, but then they themselves have benefited in some way at some point in the past. It seems a bit hypocritical again. But then again, it doesn't just focus on Kurt Wadsworth. It also applies to Salty Pancakes in the past because when it came to Lance Kelly in the, originally, he uh, was doing like some, um, what was it, GoFundMe or something or... Uh, membership, but whichever way around it was, one person did it and then another person complained and then the other person did it themselves. So it's like the human centipede effect. You get stitched from mouth to arse and then everyone feeds through but complains at the same time. So yeah, good good job there. Good job there. Very clever. Um, Yeah. Anything else to mention? Yeah, but what about that time, Kurt Wadsworth? You say about effing up the case and um, disrespecting it, etc., etc. But what about the time when you were basically half pissed again in that saddle sore bar and you were in that live stream, what was it, on Bella V's or somewhere else, and he says laughing and joking about, oh, we, we need to go and kill Dylan, even though he was already dead? What about that? That was a bit dodgy, right? That was documented by some people. Yeah. It was a bit rich to say something very questionable like that and then afterwards then call out other people. Yeah, mm. anyway, what else do we have here? If you knew who gives and paid for your life with his blood and you would care to talk to him, yar, he would help you know who is real and who is not. In this serious case of one young man of many, Dylan is not the only one as to what is really happening to these young men and others in this area. Pray, dude, you will be surprised what you will then learn. You will then have to be very brave and trust in the saviour, Yehar, to reveal the truth. You will then learn. Be brave. Forget the money, please. Right, so I guess this comment came last. It was a bit of ranting, complaining, whinging and whining. And now it's returned back to Jesus Tyler. Get your candles out. Light them up. Not like Chinese spy balloons, though, because they'll pop instantly. Right, okay. So we've we've come back to religion. Oh, great. Oh, oh are we talking about the Bourbons? I mean, the Mormons, the LDS church. I said it correct this time. I'm not quite sure here, but it looks like it's some kind of religious reference. 
In addition, now they're talking a bit in third person, a bit more cryptic now. It sounds like the type of salty pancake stuff of there's multiple people out there and multiple conspiracies and multiple people getting hurt and injured. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe that will come out with time. That is why, and yet people didn't acknowledge it at the time, when Warlight Ref was covering the Dylan Rounds case, and then I started looking at alternative crime within the area or nearby, looking at patterns and trends of certain profiles of people targeted or impacted negatively, a certain gender, a certain age range, etc., etc. Does it match Dylan's descriptions? A certain type of people impacted, taken away, whatever, right? And people back then whinging and whining, Oh, well, like, Raph, why are you looking at this? It's so relevant. It's got nothing to do with Dylan Mount. It's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with that. And it's like, maybe I was ahead of my time before everybody else was. Because I was looking at additional things going on in the area to establish a link. Okay? As said, under control then, under control now. Anything else to highlight? Hmm. Hmm. So I've... Who is Yeehaw? Are you talking about Yeshua? Or Yeehaw, cowboy! Right on the ball! I don't know. I think we're going into the cowboy and western stage. Interesting. Is that it for now? Looks like it. So it was kind of short, but whiny at the end of the day. You know, it tends to be the people that are the whiniest and whingiest and bitchiest tend to be the ones that have done trouble themselves, right? So that's kind of typical in a sense. You thought that the people that have done something wrong at any point or stage would know better when to talk and when not to. Are they in a position to talk, yes or no? It seems like some of the people out there that just casually watch in the background, lurking in the background, aren't causing some of them, I mean, only some of them, aren't causing any trouble at all. And yet they're not saying too much, they're just keeping to themselves, not causing any trouble. Shout out to those people, okay? Just a random little shout out there. Right, so we've gone through that now. Let's just briefly go to the maps and I'll just give you a bit of narration story time, okay? Right, here we are just briefly on the maps. Try and locate Grangehead property down here. Just wanted to focus on this one more time or so, or at least for now, just for discussion purposes. So after watching that documentary and Kenneth Cooley mentioning the fact that she was present on site June the 2nd, was Justin Rounds present there too? Not quite sure, it wasn't exactly mentioned, but at least Candice Cooley was, along with the police and one of the sheriffs, just casually nearby, Brenna being present too, and then Brenna just simply going in to the shed and doing spring cleaning, moving the grain truck, leaving it out. You know, it's a crime scene, it's valuable stuff, potential evidence being damaged and harmed. Candice Cooley being present, police not doing anything. Why did Candice Cooley not do anything herself at the time? I mean, did Candice Cooley immediately feel that this was wrong? That something wasn't right? That things were being harmed? I know you can't say everything lies on Candice Cooley or that she has to do everything about it, but was there any protesting taking place at the time by Candice? Because it's not really been mentioned. You know, everyone's different, I guess. People react differently, understandable. But you thought if Brenna was just casually walking on out with bin bags full of stuff, who knows what, taking it down near to his trailer, loading it into the back of his truck, and then going off wherever after. Now, was an actual date or timestamp given as to when Brenner drove away with the bin, back, bin bags in the back? No. That was never mentioned. What day? Same day or a different day? Brenner and Don, maybe, as Candice Cooley highlighted, down to Wendover. You know... Okay, we can f some people can focus and obsess on the gun and key fob, yes or no, uh, the phone at Lucent Pond, the pond itself, but why not let's focus in on spring cleaning June 2nd, but more so the fact that Candice Cooley was present and yet Brenner still got on with what he was doing and wasn't phased by it. Let's focus on questioning when did Brenner leave the area driving away with those bin bags in the back and what direction did he head in? Was anyone present at the time of him leaving to go and dispose of those items, supposedly speaking? We've never received an answer about that. A timestamp, a date. No CCTV mentioned either. 
As said, more effort was put into Chase Venstra, who was supposedly never a part of the investigation to begin with, with a CCTV footage retrieval. Some people have made links, saying when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case and how it's been handled, it's the same with the Aiden Clean case, Aiden Clean case how CCTV could have been available in some areas, but never utilised and went to waste. Mm. Why? Priority list are on the, the lower end because of the characters of these missing people, maybe. Just zoom on out for a second. Shame Paul Graham doesn't experience the sheds anymore. Mm. As I said, this imagery is outdated, of course, but it's just easier to look at on the screen without all those white overlays and boxes on the screen, okay? But yeah, that's just my focus and questioning would be spring cleaning, potential evidence which is lost or was lost. But see, you know, this is the thing, it's still a mystery. Like, let's just be realistic and honest. When it comes to the gun and key fob, that's still a bit back and forth, right? Let's put that aside. What about other things like key potential evidence which is 100% lost? Because like, look, look at this, everybody focus, listen right now. There is a difference between evidence which is long gone by now and there's no way of retrieving it and then there's evidence which is not within one's possession or presence but could still be out there. What are examples of each other? Well, examples of evidence which are long gone and unretrievable would be the supposed DNA in the grain shed and elsewhere where those cadaver dogs had a final hit on, as if Dylan could have been there at some point. But because no forensics were done, that DNA was wasted, went to waste. Just like how it was mentioned in the documentary by Karen Larry Rounds, okay, etc. When it comes to Dylan's vehicle data, the pickup, 100 miles gone to waste, lost that as well. There are examples of key potential evidence which may have led to the direction, the final place where Dylan was buried. But you can't retrieve that now because it was lost, deleted, removed, evaporated, whatever you want to call it, okay? You can't get it back. Game over with that. But an example of evidence which has been lost but not completely, technically speaking, would be the bin bags full of whatever, okay? If you think back, people dump stuff out there and litter. When Lance Kelly has gone on his hikes and searches, he's found all kinds of items along the way. Some have been preserved, others not so much, but there's still been remnants at the end of the day, in bags and not, right? If you got Brenner with items bagged up, taking them somewhere let's say, out in the wild, in the desert, and they're disposed of, technically speaking, they're still out there, just like Dylan Rounds remains, okay? Out there somewhere. What if they were taken to a, a tip, a dump, dumping site, a landfill? Would it be game over then? You could argue, yeah. Yeah, you could say that, but... The same could be said about Dylan Rounds, right? People are hopeful to find his remains, but then there's some out there that feel that he was taken to a landfill or disposed of that way, and then there might not be a, it might not be possible to retrieve him. And then other people think that Dylan Rounds, true form of desecration, broken down, burnt down, uh, or put in some acid. How can you retrieve them? Not really possible. So there's that counter argument there. But if people strongly believe that Dylan can be found eventually and recovered his remains, which is a form of evidence on him himself within the case, the bin bags are possible and up for play too. Does Brenner look like the type of person that was, would drive all the way down to somewhere like Wendover and dispose of the stuff? Would he do that? Obviously, we're getting a bit... Oh, fucking me. What's going on here? Going all the way down to Wendover to dispose of the stuff or not? There we go. Would he? When it's more populated, surrounded by people. As others have said, that Brenner would keep away from most humans and keep a bit of a low profile or something. If you're disposing of things, you know, Brenner's lazy, he's probably not going to go the full distance to dispose of it. You might just dump it somewhere in the desert or bury it, just like with Dylan. Now, 
could you, I don't think it's ever been mentioned this, but is there a possibility that where those bin bags were taken by Brenner could have been taken to the same spot where Dylan Rounds was disposed of? Is that a possibility? Does anyone think that way or not possible? Just want to know your thoughts on the matter, right? If Dylan Rounds has not been found yet, nor have the trash bags, then maybe it's because they're both in the same place or near in proximity to one another. Is that a possibility? How likely is it for Brenner to bury bin bags than to just dump them somewhere in open sight? What's more likely? Is there a possibility that if you find the bin bags and it's potential evidence, then it leads to the location of where Dylan Rounds is at? Maybe, maybe not. Could it just at least be more evidence to strengthen the case? Yeah, possibly. More likely, I'd say. So these are things you just got to look at, right? Um, as well, if they were disposed of the bags, would they have been dumped all in the same area or spread about? Makes you think. And, you know, besides body parts, which seems unlikely because it would have been a giveaway on site at the time, June 2nd, what other type of evidence could it be? If people had to guess, share their thoughts down below in the comments, what do you think that potential evidence was in those bin bags? Clothing? Items? Material? Equipment? You know? I just want to know, in general. Were they ever secretly retrieved? Well, they've never been talked about. Police never pursued it or followed it up, so I think it's still out there. Lance Kelly has made an effort to look for it, but not been successful. It's just, it just makes you think, right? Dylan Rounds is hard to locate. The bin bags are hard to locate. If both are hard to find, is it because they're both in the same spot? Yeah, I've not really heard anyone mention that before. But just a suggestion, okay? As for Candice Cooley, I don't know if she was present at the time to witness Brenner drive away. If so, I'm surprised Candice Cooley or someone else didn't follow after Brenner just to see where he went. It would have made sense to do that. But then again, maybe because it's so open and vast, it's hard to follow somebody, right? It would be a dead giveaway immediately. Maybe if they put a tracker on Brenner's vehicle, that would have been the only way around it. Because if he actually followed them driving, Brenner would have caught on pretty quick. So I get that, okay? But be sure to share your thoughts down below regarding that singular event and where that potential evidence could be. Because technically, besides it being at a landfill or tip and just dumped in the wild, it could well still exist out there, okay? Right, so I actually forgot to do one thing earlier, and that was look at the comment section of the latest video last night, which was one of those little live chat room videos. Now, not many people were present at the time, but um, I guess people weren't expecting it. Plus, a video of mine was on earlier, so that was enough to satisfy people. Um, as for context, the reason why that little... Um, live chat room video three hour thing was on my channel it was simply because i uploaded it originally days before it received that copyright claim the false one with the false music so i just basically re-uploaded it at the time took the music out and then posted it live and then i thought well with this one in the library i might as well throw it out there eventually and as well that one the copyright claim was taken off so it's okay now but kind of irrelevant. What happened, happened. Not good. But we're looking at the comments here because unexpectedly there were some comments regarding those key individuals like Corey and there was a familiar face showing up for the first time ever on my channel too. So we'll get to that in a second. Just to newest comments at the bottom. We've got Cleo spending the evening together. Need to check my schedule. Who are you spending the evening with Cleo? So will I get in trouble for being dodgy? Um, well, do you want to be in trouble? I don't know. And, yeah. The, I mean, like, all in all, there's a difference between being dodgy and being erratic. You know what I'm saying? Erratic can be a bit out of control, a bit abrupt, uh, a bit of a mood changer, and uh, not always good. But we've got Jonas High Wallet Ref, SB Vegas Adventures back out there in the desert looking for Kenny Veach. That's good to hear, of course. SB Vegas Adventures, 
has been keeping the Kenny Reach case alive, as well as Jeff Klein away for some time now. That's good of them. But here we go. Cleo failed miserably once again last night. Why did you fail, Cleo? Why did you fail and how? And here we go. Everybody in the chat and everybody watching in the background, we got 28 Alice finally showing up, okay? So just in general, shout out to 28 Alice for popping on in. Welcome to the channel. Let's just see the comment, what she says here in response to Corey. So 28 Alice says, Corey is not salty pancakes. She is exactly who she says she is. The people bitching are only doing so because they know she's right. Also remember, it's only an opinion because she does know the players. So back off by Felicia and missing puzzle whatever. You have your opinions, let her have hers. Salty Crew is still around, just none of your channels are not worth watching unless someone brings it to our attention. Ah, so it's like a Mr. X situation. Oh, I'm not going to bother with these people. i got better things to be doing. i got to be going elsewhere. High-end places, high-end malls. By the way, sign up to our platform. It's doing great. It's doing absolutely incredible. Unlike yours, petty ass. But yeah, I think that's the situation what we've got here. Now, clearly it seems that 28 Alice did not see or envision her cheap ass running shoes from the Dollar Tree store ambassador of piss pornus as a major issue. So I guess that sets the record straight there. But don't worry, Alice, we did see some shoes recently for $29.99, which is a bit overpriced. But then again, just like our platform, that's exactly what you're paying for. Anyway, I'm going to talk to better people. So uh, yeah, you got that. Um, to be honest, with or without Alice, it's not a loss as for coverage on the case, so it's okay. Uh, but anyway, it's good of Alice to pop on in, even if it's temporary. Um, just a random question, like the original profile picture of the headset. Is it glued onto your head? It's just because when it came to Dale, Dale said he has his headphones on after the Five Guys incident. And now we're not talking about Betty Hayward. You copied my line, man! Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, when it comes to Miss T, she's got like a, a one-piece earpiece, like some kind of high-end spy. Uh, but, you know, who has the headsets glued on or taped on? Anyone? Or is it quite loose? I don't know. But just as a, a brief acknowledgement, when it comes to 28 Alice, her original channel was terminated. Was it warranted? I don't know. I don't think so, but it was taken down at the same time when Salty Pancake's channel was taken down. So even though she may have not done much wrong, her channel was terminated, yet she's here on YouTube. So what this is considered is ban evading against YouTube TOS, kind of like Mr. X. So you could argue they're all as bad as each other, can't seem to control themselves, but, you know, if they want to get their word out or share their comments elsewhere, they've got to have an account. They'll just have to do it under a different email. Obviously, YouTube doesn't approve of that, but people still do it regardless. Joined three days ago, so this is a fresh account. Now, I am awaiting to see if any of the potato pickers come on in and say this is actually a fake account. Anyone going to say it's a fake account? You're welcome to say so now. Fake, 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 true, 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 true. I don't know. Listen, we're not going to an eBay auction here because Badger Life will be clawing at the ground if it jump for joy comes back on in. Um, anything on here? Not really. New account, though. Just see what the responses are. By Felicia, saying, John Sheldon says otherwise. Corey responds back to By Felicia, saying, Kurt, John called me right after he hung up the phone. You do not know us, nor have we ever met you. You had no business calling us right after Dylan went missing. We were not the people you should have contacted. You got John's number from someone. You only asked John about me and where I was and now and how I knew his info a few days ago. Do you want me to tell you what an attorney does with that info and phone calls? Thank you for exposing yourself and John is furious with you. You only knew Dylan for a few months. You only briefly knew him before that. You do not own the property, nor did you really know Dylan's business life. But 
you sure knew Chase and Robert and where items were. Interesting you felt comfortable in taking items that did not belong to you as well from both places. Wait, so is Corey calling Felicia out as Kurt Wadsworth? Felicia responds, stop making assumptions, Corey, of who I am. Again, you have your info all mixed up. Corey responds back, then you need to tell me because a law and an attorney will. If you don't, you don't know. Our business down there. Right, so we're getting a bit of friction, tension, resistance here and now. All I would say in advance, okay, as for the regular people that watch my channel and people in the background too, um, don't treat this as the end of the world. Just envision this as what used to happen in the past, whether it be with the same characters or different people, that tension, that friction, um, back and forth, back and forth, right? Where it's like an inner conflict within the case. You don't want that, but it's happening, but you don't have to be dragged into it. Think for yourself, listen in, but don't demonstrate internalisation unless you're comfortable in doing so, okay? So it's still under control. With that documentary coming out recently, it's kind of challenged some thoughts and countered points by Corey. Bit of give and take, whether it's for the right reasons or not, but it's opened up some new discussions all in all. So uh, yeah, shout out to the people in recent time that have popped on into the channel and left the comments and said what they've got to say and uh, yeah. If you do have any additional questions, make sure to leave them below as well and feel free to check out the previous video. A link will be provided down below in the pinned comment section along with some additional links. I think that's it for now. Bit of a shorter video, I think. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned some additional things or a different perspective. Maybe it started new discussions off with some events out there, hopefully. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye and good night.